Welcome to uh, CF5. Uh, we've actually got more than five tonight, but that's okay. Um, six. We're, we're glad that this we're is mine. the CF6. This is our special uh, CF5 Thanksgiving uh, promotion, thing, uh, telling thanks. We've got some special guests with us tonight. Uh, of course, my name is Dr. Lee Osler. I'm in the good state of Washington. And we're joined tonight uh, with our uh, illustrious co-host, uh, Jim and Ann Glenn. Hi, y'all. Uh, Jim, we call him the money guy. And Ann is our resident nutritional expert, having a great degree and much experience there. We also have returning with us as a guest host, Philippe Silvestre, physician in Calgary. Uh, we had him on a week or two ago and a marvelous story there. And we've got uh, two other guests that will be... Uh, uh, helping us tonight, Barbara Stoltz, wave to us. There we go. And uh, and Ryan Osler, who's a, a newly minted right. physician. We're glad to have him in our in our crowd. We'll start by uh, making well, a real quick. We're we're missing somebody, Lee. Where did she well, go? Well, we got the party animal. We, we, she's at a party. You know, Mar Maureen, uh, Dr. Hayes is uh, in New Orleans. Uh, that's New Orleans for those of you around the world, but. Uh, she's with her family there, and we hope that she uh, enjoys her family there and, and totally misses us. But we're thankful that she's a part of us. And we're, Absolutely. We're so um, tonight we're going to have a special treat. We're going to we're going to talk about um, things that we're thankful for with related to see and just kind of check in with some people's stories that have had some remarkable experiences, at least in our opinion, uh, over the course of their time uh, with this good redux. We'll begin by making a disclaimer, a, dis, a uh, disclosure here that, that what we're going to be talking about, even though it does have some medical applications with our health and anti-aging, uh, th this is not to, about diagnosing or um, it's not about treating. It's not about uh, medical diseases specifically. And so you'll hear conversations um, surrounding um, health conditions that we will generally describe in which most people are very understanding of. Um, but we just want to make that really clear that we're not in this to diagnose, treat, or, di uh, or to uh, deal with specific uh, health issues in that regard. So with that, we want to turn first to Barbara. Barbara, you've got an amazing story. We'd like you, if you could come on and tell us... Um, you're a CF story and, and tell us what happened with you and why this is why this is something that you hang in there with. Okay, thank you everybody. I appreciate being invited tonight. Um, well, first of all, welcome from Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, I've been in this industry for over 25 years now and back in April of 2016, a friend left a note on my door. It said, Barbara, come to my house Thursday night. Bring some friends. I'll, I have something important to share with you. Love, Jorin. P.S. And I'll have food. And I knew Jorin was a good cook, so I decided, what the heck? Might as well show up. So I brought a couple friends, and that night changed our lives forever because that night we were introduced to this incredible redox technology. And I am actually a four-time Big C uh, survivor, and... One of my testimonies is back in April of 2017, I had a large mass and I had to have a major female surgery and I was told I was going to be on bed rest for four to six weeks. Well, at that time, I had already been with the business for about a year and I was kind of excited. I had my books all stacked by my bedside. I had my refrigerator all stocked and four to six weeks with the home-based business sounded good to me. But what happened was I had my surgery on a Thursday morning and I elected to take my products with me to the hospital. I had them loud and proud on my nightstand. I had the redox molecules, a redox spray bottle, and also the redox gel. And I elected not to have any um, pain meds after surgery. Now, the first night, my pain level was about an eight or a nine, but I was able to walk the corridor at the hospital. The second day, my pain level was still at eight or nine, but I was able to walk the corridor and up and down a half flight of steps. And then they sent me home on Saturday morning. Folks, my pain level dropped to a three all week long. And that following Sunday, which was Mother's Day, I woke up with no pain. So that's one of my amazing stories that I'm very grateful for. 
The second, I'm going to let Jim pop up a quick slide of what happened in March of 2019. Jim, you want to show my mic real quick? Here's a great picture of what happened to me in March of 2019. I had a cell dividing growth on my left cheek. They had to cut a perimeter hole larger than a silver dollar. They sutured me up. And folks, I looked like the bride of Frankenstein for about four months. And by September of that year was my 40th high school reunion. And I felt like the prettiest girl there because my face had healed so well. And what's most remarkable about this story is I only had one day of pain. Yes, you got me one day of pain. And if you do the math, I'm 60 years old. So this product has helped me with cellular health, anti-aging, and athletic performance. And I am so grateful that my friend left that note on my door. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. That's, you drink that's, how many a day? that's amazing. <laughs> I didn't. Um, I did not measure how much I was drinking. I just kept drinking and drinking and drinking, um, and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. So those molecules did a very, very good job with me. And because of that, I've got a very nice business internationally, and we're helping thousands of people worldwide. I just love this business. That's wonderful. Awesome. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Thank you. You betcha. Thank you, Barb. Thank All right, you, go ahead. All right, Lee, introduce Mr. Ryan. Ryan. B Mr. Uh, Ryan Osler. Um, now, do you guys know each other, or is that just a coincidence? <laughs> <laughs> There's no resemblance. I don't know. We we go way back. You go way back. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. He's, he's yeah. known me almost my whole life, so. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So Ryan, uh, is the, Ryan is my son and married to uh, Ashley, and Ashley was... Uh, has got a really special story and she's not feeling well tonight as it turns out, but uh, Ryan's going to pinch hit and maybe give some of his, um, his comments. He made his debut on the OSEA five in Nashville yeah. and was with us there helping us uh, with the redox matters book and just, you know, taking in for the, his first time since, uh, since his uh, graduation. Um, and, and now as a physician, uh, he was taking in the OSEA redox story there. So Ryan, I, you know, what I'd like to do is to have you um, in Ashley's stead, but even through your eyes, walk us through um, a little bit of what, what her background and, and what she's dealt with and how maybe ASEA has been a, uh, an interesting part of her uh, getting better. Absolutely. So um, obviously uh, I got married to Ashley a number of years ago and I remember going into it Ashley told me I have a medical condition uh, deals with inability to properly modulate blood sugars. And at the time I was a gung ho computer developer and in, in budding training. I was going to do computer programming for my life's work. And I asked my dad, what does this mean? And he sat me down and he mapped it all out on paper. What this meant getting into this relationship. If I'm going to commit to this girl, I need to know what's going on. And uh, I got into marriage and you're kind of, you know, white eyed, starry eyed, everything's uh, gumdrops and roses and lollipops. And uh, shortly thereafter, we decided it's time to grow our family. So we start to have kids and my wife's body did not do well with pregnancy. She got very, very sick uh, between the three pregnancies. She spent nine months in the hospital, multiple pick lines. For those of you that know, you get the IV line when you go to the, the ER and it's very superficial, lasts for if you're lucky, a few days. Uh, pick line kind of goes into a deeper vein, an artery or a vein up here in the, the arm, typically sometimes under the, the bicep. And it's good for a longer time, but still not as good. And at one time she was sick enough, she needed a central line uh, just to get uh, paraintral nutrition, TPN, total paraintral nutrition. She weighed less when she gave birth than all three pregnancies and when she got pregnant. Um, and I just kind of like watched her deteriorating, I guess. And there wasn't a whole lot that I could do. And as a husband, there's absolutely nothing worse than feeling helpless to, to helping your loved ones. And so 
uh, three pregnancies, um, two beautiful children, and our middle child passed away. And so I kind of watched my wife not only deal with all these physical struggles, all the just that difficulty of not being able to be the mom that she wanted for our son while she was pregnant with with our two daughters, or not being able to you know actively contribute. And I'd come home, and the house would be a mess because all that she could do that day due to physical strength was kind of just be on the couch and make sure my son stayed safe. And so I'd come home and she'd feel like a horrible wife and all those sorts of things. Not that I ever like blamed her. I never like tried to put this on her or anything, but she just said emotional weight that you carry when you're looking at all the things you didn't do. Kind of like the emotional weight I carried of not being able to protect her, not being able to fix it and make it better. She felt the same, but from a different venue. Um, and so she, sometimes she would try and cope with not only the physical, but also that mental of losing a child and, and not being the mom that she wanted or the wife that she wanted. And she found herself kind of down a dark alley of uh, way too many benzos and benzodiazepines and opioids. And it just became this tough struggle for her because then, then you, you, when you see yourself in a, in, a, in a lane that you don't want to be in, going down a path you don't want to go down, but you don't know how to get out of it, that just beats you up even more. And so she's, for years, she's had this internal conflict. And I've been standing back. I'm like, you're okay, right? I'm here. It's going to be okay. We're going to pull you out of this. We're, we're going to help you. But that's easy to say, and it's a lot harder for her to do and to see and to feel when you're in the, in the middle of, of all of this. And so it was just a back and forth. We were always trying something. We're trying to go to the next doctor. We're trying to feed the next thing. And all of this together was kind of the catalyst of me waking up in January of, I think, if I remember right, it was 2014, January 2014. And I just had this thought in the back of my head and it was, I'm done being the patient. I need to know what's going on with my family. I need to know what this is all about. I'm gonna go to med school. And I went to my dad and I remember he was sitting in his office and, and I, I stopped by one day and I was like, dad, I'm gonna go to med school. And he looked at me and he was like, all right, Let's figure out how to do it. And, but I could see in his eyes, he was like, what is wrong with you? Like, <laughs> this, is, this is a horrible idea. You've got a great career. You've got a great everything. Ryan, how old were you? Just out of curiosity. 35. Okay. I think it was 35, 36, maybe. I don't know, somewhere in there. 35. Okay. I started med school when I was 37. I'm 42 now. Um. And what, what's amazing is to see, like, my wife was all for this. She was happy. She supported me. Um, but it's like, even the more I learned, there, I, anybody that's been through medical school, Dr. Uh, Felipe, you, you might understand this. You, you learn a bunch of stuff in medical school, and you have no idea how it applies directly. I mean, you have to spend years in the field, seeing patients, doing stuff before you finally learn. Like, I could describe in detail what happens with diabetes. I could describe in detail what happens with chronic heart failure. But that's difficult just because I know what's going on doesn't mean I can help my wife. Right. And I remember when dad, uh, Dr. R, my dad here, Dr. Osler came home, he had found a SIA. He, he had done some stuff. Everybody knows his story with, with my stepmom and, and the doctors that, that helped him figure this out. And I watched my wife take it. And it was funny because like all of a sudden I saw like some of her like addictive personalities start to like shift towards the Cecilia. She's like, this is good. This helps me. I want more of this. You know, like this solves some problems. And so it's been great. These last few years, I've been watching her and she's like slowly coming back to life and she's slowly coming back into herself. And it's like little by little, step by step, I get to see all of these other things. Like she, she deals with um, proper blood sugar controls is difficult for her. Uh, she has moments of mania and moments of depression that she cycles through. And I've watched over these last few years as A, my wife starts to come back into herself. Like I'm, I'm start, instead of like this chaos where she's always trying to contain it, contain it, it's kind of like, yeah, there's still chaos, but we're getting through this. And so it's, it's like a little less and it's a little better. Um, she's found new things to focus on. Like she's been able to uh, write a book. Uh, she spent about nine months working on a book and she was really proud of herself and, and she got it up on Amazon and it's for sale and it's, it's pretty cool. Very proud of her, but it gave her like this, this outlet. She, she decided she wanted to go back to college. And so 
Um, she's doing some online courses to, to get a certificate and then move on to get an AA and then maybe even a bachelor's. But the coolest thing in the world is watching her be mom. You know, watching her get to do all those cool little things that she always wished she could. She just didn't know, like she didn't feel like she had enough control of her mental faculties to do them. Now she's just like, yeah, I'm going to take the kids to the, to the public swimming pool and I'm just going to sit there and exist for 45 minutes while they swim or an hour and a half while they swim. These little things that she couldn't just do. It's like, like she would have a hard time just being in one spot, but now she can just sit and watch them swim and we'll have, you know, movie nights and we just sit on the couch and she's okay. And she's just chills with us and she can breathe. So it's been, it's been really fun to watch her and Asiya, like, like when she started taking this and drinking it regularly and she'll cycle anywhere from, you know, just one of those little capfuls to like a bottle a day, it just kind of like, it varies with her mood and what she's going through and how she's feeling inside on how much she's going to take on any given day. Um, I, I think I said this in Nashville. I know it's a tough day when I come home and she's just carrying the bottle around with her and she's got the blue bottle in her hand. I'm like, okay, it's been one of those days I can take over, you know, like let's give her a break. But sometimes it's just, I come home and she's cooking dinner and, you know, the kids are fighting because that's what kids do. Or they're doing homework that they're supposed to do, you know, last week because they're just like me and like to procrastinate everything. And it's just fun to kind of like finally feel that normal that you dream of when you first get married. It's kind of finally coming together. I can see it. So it's been pretty cool. Ryan, how that's amazing. Um, and there's a lot of people dealing with those issues. And I'm going to share my story about my ad addiction to pain pills as well. Um, how what, did you just trust your dad and get on the molecules? I mean, you're a doctor now. What was that transition like? I mean, you had to look at the bottle and go, come on, guys, that's salt water from Salt Lake City. It's a dietary supplement. I mean, how did you deal with that? Yeah. So one of the, I think one of the biggest bonuses I had growing up was that uh, my stepmom also had a lot of illnesses. And it was a bonus to me because I got to see the limits of modern medicine. Right. I got to see all the things that they couldn't do for her. And so I went in. I'm kind of like. I'm a skeptic at heart. You know, I'm kind of a contrarian. If, if, if I see the mass of people running to the left, I'm like, hmm, I'm going to go to the right. You know, I mean, that's just like, it drives my dad nuts. You can ask him about it some other time, but I'm just kind of like, I kick against the pricks all the time. And so when I went into med school, I'm like, yeah, this is great science, but you can't tell me that this is the only answer. There has to be other things out there. Right. I mean, one of the most frustrating days of my life in med school came when I was just studying. I was sitting in the study hall. I'm studying and these girls behind me were complaining. There was a, a just a beautiful young uh, Korean girl. She's about 1920 who had passed away recently from a complicated UTI. Any doctor can tell you, take one pill, UTI is cleared up, everything's good. But she didn't take that pill because they used Eastern medicine. Her mom was from Korea. Grandma was from Korea. Great grandma was from Korea. And so they, they went Eastern medicine to try and treat uh, this UTI got out of hand. She ended up passing away from complications. And these girls behind me were just complaining about how stupid this was and what a waste of time and all sort of stuff. And it drove me insane because I'm like, but that's exactly how her mom cured her UTIs and her grandma and her great grandma and thousands upon thousands of people in Korea have done that exact same thing and it's worked for them. And millions of people in, in Eastern Asia area have had their medicines that they've used and it's worked for them. And because you find this one time that it didn't work and it went really bad, you're gonna bad mouth this whole, this, this doesn't make sense. Just because we have an answer, doesn't mean we have the answer. All roads lead to Rome. So growing up, working with my dad, we would talk about this stuff all the time. What does work, what doesn't work, how science works. This dude, when I got in trouble, I would get lectures and I mean, I'm like, I would do like hour long lectures about like everything. And he would tie like everything in all the like religious stuff, science stuff. I mean, it was like, I'd go to school and I'd see my friends like, oh, I got in trouble, my dad beat me. And I'm like, you're lucky. I got lectured like all night, like hours. But like, so, so th but that hey, was thanks for shedding the truth about. on Dr. Lee. <laughs> I really appreciate that. We know. Now he knows why he does what he does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's great. He's 
he's the best there is. And, um, but the cool thing was, is him and I have always had this relationship where we just talk. Like, I have this idea. Let's just talk about it. Let's see where this goes. And we'll just like, we'll bounce ideas off each other for half an hour, come to absolutely no conclusion, walk away, come back at it two weeks later. We'll talk about some more stuff. And so when I see it brought up, I've sat at his feet enough that I don't want to say it's blind trust because it's not. He's earned it. Right. But I trust him first and we'll figure it out. I'll, I'll fill in the details as we go. If you say it's good, it's good because you've proven yourself a thousand times over. I'll fill in the details as we go, if that makes sense. But did you at all look into the science or was it? Because that's kind of what I did with my story with my best friend is that I trusted him, but I wasn't a doctor. So was that what it took? No, so, just yeah. the... so I went fishing a little bit because I know that like if you take something okay. like this and you just like drop it on your professor's lap, they got to poo poo it. They, they have to stay with like, you know, the, the double blinded random control trials and they got to, you know, with what all the research says. Right. And so I would just be like, here's the general idea. Here's how the molecules work. Is that, would that help ATP? And, you know, I, I went and asked Dr. Uh, Dr. Lyons and I would say, if we added this, if we could figure out a new way to add all of these molecules, would that, would that help ATP? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's what ATP does and does this. I'm like, sweet. Okay. Like I didn't have to ask him, will this work? Does this product, you know, blah, blah, blah. I just asked at the end of the day, the process that they're claiming it works, does it work? Yeah, that's exactly how it works. Okay. So I know that the process they're claiming works. That doesn't mean, you know, I could, I could claim any process that I wanted. So now I got to go try it. I see it working with, with uh, my wife. I've seen it work with my mom. I've seen it work with, I've seen it work with. I hear the testimonials. I mean, at some point in time, it stops being anecdotal because I have an in of however many people are using SIA. Right. And I can say their claims are ABC. And per my professor, if A, B, C, then D, and I'm seeing a whole bunch of D. So yeah. do I have the double blind random control trials that I would love to have to take to my attendings to say, look, let me push this on my, with my patients? No, I don't. But that's okay. We'll get there. Wow. You have a wonderful um, story. Okay. So Lee, if you don't mind kind of lead into how you and I know we've heard our stories before but I keep reminding there's going to be people listening to this that have never heard Dr. Philippe and Barbara and now Ryan Ryan thank you so much for being so open and honest because yeah. uh, that had to be so difficult to lose a child I, I can't yeah. fathom what that was like for you as well um but Lee what started the whole journey for you and then Philippe will come to you. Um, well, let me why? just let me just say this uh, about Ryan. Um, he's very humble. He's 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 one of the most brilliant uh, people I know. He he's got that photographic memory type of thing, and it's kind of hard being around him because he he already he's already one up to you because he knows more. But uh, it's it's a joy to have him with us. But uh, with regard to his wife, uh, Ashley, my daughter-in-law, you know, she used to be a very frequent flyer in the hospitals. She we, it was just constantly going to the hospital for this, that, or the other. And we were just talking about it earlier today. It's been quite a while. I mean, it's much less frequent. And so, and her energy's up. She's able to run. Uh, she She's quite an athlete. Um, and that's helping her you know, control m uh, many things. And so... Uh, those who have been on uh, a SIA United, uh, you can actually search for her. She has a she has a before and after picture uh, in that, or maybe it's a SIA Healthy Self. That's what it is. The Facebook group. You can look at uh, her story there and um, and and see what that was about. For me, uh, yeah, my wife. Um, you know, we've been married for going in our fourth decade now, and uh, she actually got sick. The first symptoms exhibited the night of our open house after we got married. And for, so for almost three and a half decades, it's been a constant merry-go-round of just going around and around, trying to find help. And uh, it turns out she had some endocrine-based uh, disorders related to the pituitary. And, um, and it's been profound uh, issues for her. And we're not done yet. I mean, the, it's some of the water that's under the bridge can't be pulled back, and, and it is what it is. 
But having said that, uh, in the late 2018, we were sitting in a doctor's appointment and we we're just basically commenting, complaining, whatever, that she's plateauing. We're, we're not seeing progress. And he said, I think you need to get her on some redox signaling molecules. And uh, I, I, I distinctly remember looking at this, this good, wonderful physician. Um, his name is Dr. Lin, and some of you heard him. Uh, he's been interviewed by Dr. Walker. And he said, well, just, um, I said, what are they? And he says, just Google it and get some. And that was the, literally the end of the conversation. And so I went and did that. I found some, I found somebody to give some for me. And it was like flipping a switch within about 48 hours for her. It, it just made an incredible difference. Enough so that I recognized there was something to this and my, my intense brain just had to know what this was and how it was working. Uh, two months, uh, two weeks later, I was at a professional meeting. I'm a past president for the American Academy for Oral Systemic Health, and we were having our annual scientific session in uh, Vegas, Las Vegas, and we were, had a dual meeting with the American College for the Advancement of Medicine, a functional medicine group, and um, and there ASEA was in the exhibit hall, and I was just like, this is just too much. These these dots are connecting out of heaven or something, but. Uh, it was like a sign, a signal, you know, it's like there's something to this. And so I, I enjoyed many conversations there at the meeting with many physicians who were utilizing redox um, signaling in their practices and well, as well as personally. And so I came back uh, very much better informed and with many lights that were going on and, um, and began to have some of my own experiences with regards to just my sleep and uh, the quality of my mind, the sharpness the thinking, cognitive, you know, skills, um, I could, I could, I could tell there was a difference. And so in the intervening, you know, three years, as I say, um, it, it hasn't fixed everything related to my wife, but she is, she is demonstrably better. And I hate to think where she would be, you know, in that continual slide had this not intervened. And, uh, and I've, I've been kind of intense about it in my brain, because I said, I need to know where electrons move. And, and for those not, you know, familiar with what we're talking about, if this is the first or, you know, an early uh, uh, exposure for you, the, this is about the movement of electrons, you know, and you say, well, what does that have to do with anything? And the answer is everything. Um, you know, this is about the fuels that we combust in our cells called uh, in, inside the mitochondria and how we extract energy from the food that we eat. The food is just a, a, a passive form of energy, and it's waiting to pass its electrons to us. That's where the energy comes from. Just like a campfire, you put wood on a campfire, the wood is a reduced form of energy. It's stored energy, and it passes its electrons off to oxygen, which is why when you smother a fire and remove its oxygen, it goes out. Well, in our cells, they're no different. The oxygen is there that we breathe to accept the electrons that are coming from the fuel, the fuel or the food that we're burning or combusting. And in that process are made these oxidant or redox molecules that our cell then uses in a variety of different ways, including the activation of important signaling pathways that activate our immune system, that keep us healthy, that, that create antioxidants, that help us move into states of what we call autophagy, which is where the cells clean themselves out, take out the garbage, restore and renew, and, re, and we get our health back or we can maintain our health. So this, this product, this, uh, this redox signaling uh, product was, was stabilized in a form, in a way, that we can use it as a supplement. Again, we're, we don't make claims. We're not talking about you know, curing or fixing diseases. What we are talking about is restoring the cell's ability to function. And that's what began happening in me. That's what began happening in my daughter-in-law, Ashley. That's what began happening in my wife um, as, as we, uh, in real time, as the cells began to function. And when that happens, things clear up things change because we are sick in the first place because the cells weren't working. So that's a little, you know, blending together kind of what is the sea of redox, what is redox signaling, um, and, and what are all these metabolic shifts that are happening? 
And as kind of weaving that in a story with my wife, which is what got my attention and and caused me to dive into this. Um, I, I did a bunch of writing. I created a bunch of, you know, very long bibliography. It turned into a book. And um, and so I, I know this pretty well. You know, it's like I, uh, there's not many people that can, um, uh, can show me up, you know, in this. And, I, and I've done it on purpose because I just had to know. That was my sort of brain damage. And I had to I had to prove, and this kind of leads into you, Jim. You can come back at this later. This was my way of saying this is a real thing. This isn't some fly by night, you know, get rich quick, whatever, you know, because that was a pro it was the chicken bone in the throat story. That was a real uh, issue for me, and I think doing this investigation enabled me personally to be able to you know lay claim on the science and justify it in my own mind, and hopefully that's helping other people as well. So that's that's my story. I'd like I'd like to bring in I'd like to unless you've got a question, Jim. I want to bring Philippe. You in. didn't. You didn't. Did you finish the progression that your wife had? Did you? Where is she today? I mean, from where she was then to where she is today, how much of an improvement? Well, um, she was on pain medicine. She was on on um, oxycotton and antidepressants and sedatives like 24 seven, she probably spent about 10 years in bed, for the most part, just not, not a life. And today she is not on any pain medicine, she's not on any antidepressants. Um, she's much more stable in her blood sugar regulation. Um, her seizures have stopped probably 95 98%. So there's some really significant things that have improved. Now, is the quality of her life where she wants it to be? No, you know, there's there's always you know issues when you have the kind of things that she had going on. But I, I again, I just hate to think where we'd be without it. Wow, that's amazing. Um, gosh, you and you, the way you explain redox was beautiful. I had never heard the transfer of energy from food into your body, then your body transfers that through the ATP process. I've never heard you explain it like that. Well, you may remember in uh, 2019 in Las Vegas, um, Tyler Norton, our, our company, or the chairman, he made, a, he made a really important statement from the stage. Mm -hmm. He said that we are, we, we are redox and redox is the future and redox is energy. This is going to be about redox energy. And we, we get really kind of hung up in the superficialness of signaling. And there is so much more where this is going and where this truly is when you get into the science. This is how we as humans or any mammal for that matter, extracts energy from, from a stored fuel source. I mean, the sun creates plants, right? And puts all that energy in a plant. The question is, how does it get from the plant into me and how do I use that energy? And the answer is these electron transfers. That is what redox or reduction oxidation is all about. And when you when you get into that science, you go, everybody is just kind of, they're, they're just put their big toe in the water in terms of what we understand redox to really be. And so this is a, this is a put your seat belts on moment, hitch yourself to this star, this wagon, because where it's going is amazing. The, the science is amazing. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. <laughs> I can say. Uh, wonderful. Barbara, can you come back on real quick and introduce uh, how you came across someone that has a list of credentials that, thank God, I don't have to read it. Because sure. I have never seen anybody <laughs> has a long credential like Dr. Philippe. Uh, uh, how did you meet Dr. Philippe? How did that all happen? Um, about five years ago, um, I actually um, had met, I don't know, five years ago, I had introduced his sponsor, Dr. Marion Sides, to this business. And at the time, she had a lot of different obligations on her plate. But I knew in my heart that this was the right company for her. She just had to find the right time to do it. And now she's been scraping her plate, scraping her plate, scraping her plate. And now she's almost full time with this. And a few months ago, she uh, introduced this to Dr. Philippe. 
And he is just an amazing, amazing person. His credentials are a mile long. And it's just a pleasure to be working with somebody that's so humble that has everybody's best interest in mind. And he's just so knowledgeable about so many different things and already on the medical advisory board with our company. So I'm blessed to have him as part of our team, as part of ASEA. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Philippe. Hello, Dr. Philippe. Hello, hello. Thank you for your introduction. Am I frozen? No, you uh, are. We can still hear you, but yeah, you're. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Philippe, you're on. Hello. Thank you're you. muted. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you all, and uh, thank you for your kind words. Uh, I have a story, definitely uh, significant, significant, very significant about my encounter with the uh, signaling molecules. And that was a uh, totally unexpected turn in my life. Uh, over the past four decades, I am, a, I am a medical doctor. I am also a curious mind. I went into neuroscience, brain physiology. I got a PhD there about cognitive and comportmental uh, be, uh, behavioral sorry, uh, cognition. And uh, that I was seeking a way to pull things together in terms of understanding the global, you know, the holistic operational way to op function and perform, uh, not only physically, but as a whole. And um, I was very intrigued by the cognitive domain, which at, at the time when I ended my medical studies in the early 80s uh, was emerging. Cognition was a new paradigm, very similar to what happened in biology with the signaling molecules now or recently past few years. So um, I, uh, I try to tie a lot of dots as I can, and that explains why, yes, on a paper, if you put things one after the other, he ends up with a kind of a list of things I have been touching. But the more I know, the more I realize I don't know. And he, it is the, the problematics of all of us, because the more we want to know, I appreciated Ryan's testimonial, uh, you, yours, Barbara, Liz, testimonial is paramount as well. And of course, Jim uh, uh, echoes all of these things. We all have met that experience face to face and sometimes in a very tragic uh, moment. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I have been uh, operating different carries, kind of a shoulder by shoulder. Um, I am an aviator. I became a dog to understand why I was able to fly. I, I love performance. I love a, a number of sports, whether individual or team uh, sports. And I wanted to understand what was behind all of that uh, out of curiosity and, uh, if possible, trying to help people from that uh, amount of knowledge, that, that these bodies of knowledge. So that is my path in summary. What happens is uh, when you do uh, too much what you like too much, you get into burning yourself by the forehands. And that is a threat that is over all of us, potentially. That happens to me last year. The COVID pandemic, with the amount of additional uh, tasks and uh, workload tying with that, uh, has led me to a place where I literally crashed down, to make a long story short. Within a week, I was from high performance and ended up literally bedridden and not even understanding what was happening to me. So, oh, you know, you have those old phantoms that comes to your face. I may have, uh, you know, a tumoral thing going up somewhere. I uh, may have an immune disorder, you, you know, all the questions that raise when you are in an unexplainable situation at first. And what happened is uh, uh, the colleagues I went to see and consult to understand and read for me what I couldn't read, uh, they all ended up saying, well, I don't see anything particularly threatening for you. But the more they were saying that to me, the more I felt threatened and I felt hopeless. And I felt sinking in a hole I had no control over. And every, every testimonial we heard tonight echoes my story uh, on so different ways. The, the core phenomenon behind all of this is that anguish 
what is going to happen to me. Um, I praise God every day. I am. I walk in faith. I have a set of values which help me away and from a lot of uh, trouble. And uh, you know, I am a happy boy naturally. And when all of the things began to peel off, not my values, but the way I was living my values became impossible. I couldn't move, I couldn't think, I was weak, secluded by a loss of connections. I ended up disconnected. That is ex exactly the word that would apply global, global, globally to, to me. And uh, the more uh, my friends began to worry, to worry, I was, uh, I passed the, the, the point of weariness because I, I couldn't think. So you kind of uh, live in a hollow, in a fog, and uh, it doesn't remove the threat, but you become unable to face the threat, so you cope with it totally passively. And um, all the testimonials we heard tonight echo that as well. So it becomes totally out of control, and I was in that place. Last year, I thought I wouldn't see the end of the year at three times, and I couldn't even say it. I couldn't share it. It was just like a halo around me, surrounding me, and it was a very weird place. So uh, my friends came closer to me and began to come up with solutions, etc. I was thing, I think I was all smile at them, but I couldn't budge, I couldn't move. I was totally unable to react to anything. Bad place to be. And uh, among them, uh, my dear friend, uh, Marianne, Dr. Sides, uh, came and mentioned the signaling molecules, mentioned the redox technology, mentioned the redox science, and she knows me well. So she pulled all the strings she could to pique my curiosity because I am a curious mind normally. And, um, well, it didn't work well. I was slow. I was dragged down. I was all held back by things I couldn't identify. And uh, what happened, it took about eight to nine months for her to make a point. And at, at the end, early this year only, through fe early February, I said, okay, I'm going to try that because everything I tried and I have tried since I, I fell into this place is not working or even deteriorate me further. So that was my self-analysis here. So I went online using her virtual office she kindly, she kindly gave me access to, and I began to go to the library, you know, exploring this, this, that, etc. And she was feeding me with links, and uh, she was extremely patient with me, and I built up my diligence step by step. And I have to say, it revived me a little bit in the process. I mean, it was not good enough to bring me back on my feet, no way. But the fact I could see there could be something there for me, just gave me back hope. I was on the verge of losing hope. And uh, it's not, this is the worst place one can be. So um, step by step, I explored the science first. I am extremely familiar with the scientific domain of all kinds. So, and then I went to see the people and what actually made me jump and leap in faith in my own footprints, as well as diving in that swimming pool where I didn't have any idea what was going on, is that the personality, the, the values I share, uh, before we met those people, I'm talking here about the founders of this Asia company, Verdis Norton, Tyler Norton, the way they express themselves, the, the videos I, I could attend, telling the story, their story, and how they got to this place, that got me in. So it was more about people than the science who got me in. Of course, the science was there, and I was already satisfied by a number of things, but it was only intellectually. But what got me in the action was the heart, the heart of those people who resonated me deep with my own heart. And that is when someone is in trouble, he, go, he goes beyond knowledge. Someone can be totally knowledgeable at its best or at her best, and yet 
if the heart is lost, you lose everything. So talking about the missing link, I would say the first missing link we have to care for is the heart. Ryan has been amazing in his story. Lee, no need to, to say, you know, it's Paramount, uh, Jim, Barbara, and you have those 33 million people who are, you know, the unsung heroes about this because we are all sharing the burden and we don't pick it, we don't choose it, it just happened to you. So I was in that place. I emerged when I signed up the 28th of March, Sunday, 2000. I signed up and I enrolled and I say I surrounded. I say, this is it. Let's, let's have a look at that. Let's try it. And five days later, I got my first shipment and I began to take it with terror in my heart because even all the trust in my own, the trust in the founders, Derry, uh, Verdis and Tyler, and all the goodness I could see from shared all over the, 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 those links and, and accesses, it was still experiential to me. And when I uh, took that things, I, I took actually a third of a cup and I was trembling more out of emotion than the taking the Asia itself. So it was more me than anything that relates to those me, single molecular say, at that stage. And I take that twice a day for three days, three, four days, because I know physiology 72 hour, you know, laps accounts in physiology is highly meaningful. And when I pass my three days like that, I say, okay, I can't go, I can't go. I am on, a, on the right side of the fence now. And, uh, and I did gradually. Within the first week, I could feel gradually that little flame that was totally gone within me, within me, coming back. And like you feel that little halo within, this little light. And uh, I prefer to call it a little flame because it vacillates, you know, it's still uncertain. And then uh, the next week, I'd say I felt a tsunami of energy rising, extremely, extremely sound and strong, but not boosting, not pushing, just a gentle, but gentle, but powerful tsunami waves coming from within. And uh, it was from inside out. It came out from inside out. And I couldn't say which area of my individual entity started with to correct. <clears> that was correcting itself, but it was kind of a global thing. And uh, I couldn't breathe, the breathing came back. I was out of energy, the energy came back, number one, then the respiratory thing, then the hypersensitivities faded away. Within three, four weeks, I was already, I felt, I felt. I was over 50% of my incapacitation. And, uh, and then he kept climbing. At two months, uh, I was, I felt 75 plus, and uh, I was trying to be conservative, but I couldn't refrain myself to accept the facts. So, you know, you have the, uh, Ryan explained that very well. You have the science, you have the field, and you have to navigate, it's a mix. You, you have to harmoniously blend those perceptions and knowledge to get the real situation and that awareness. So in short, within three months, I felt I was over 80% recovery and uh, I couldn't believe it. It was beyond belief. It was a miracle to me uh, out of my faith. And uh, as the ASEA uh, redox technology, these signaling molecules, this extraordinary technology, it is an explore, astounding, absolutely, it's a feat in, in a scientific technology makeup, uh, brought me back. And I, uh, I have no reservation in, in sharing that on that way because it is my human experience. And there is nothing deeper than that. Knowledge will never reach the depth of the human experience. I, we just had you share your story a couple of weeks ago, and every time I hear it again, it's it's life changing. Um, I want to do something to help other people understand what we have. Um, Philippe, you said some really, and and Ryan, frankly, all of you. Um. The uh, 
the hope in the heart because we have to have that. But I want people to understand that everything that we have can be validated. But the thing I want people to understand, I'm going to share my screen real quick. I've got a couple of websites. First, before I do that, um, if you are a guest, if someone invited you to come watch this, I'm asking you, as when this is over, to call them up and do something. Do something. These stories are real. These lives change. This is a this is our thankful call. Um, I'm an ex stockbroker of 30 years. I used to help people save money so that maybe one day they could do what I don't believe in, which is retire. I never have believed in retirement. But you don't know how many people I've seen that saved money, but then they saw it go away because of an illness, because of an accident, because of something happening to a loved one. So I'm asking you to reach out to the person that asked you to come here and do something. Don't Doing nothing is a decision to do nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, but I want you guys, if you're a guest here, I'm going to give you three websites. Now, Philippe, you brought up one of them. And so the first one I want to share with everybody is I want you to go to amazingmolecules.com, amazingmolecules.com, no password. And I want you to scroll down to this video right here. And it's called ASEA, the Genesis. It's a 16-minute video, and I'm not going to play the whole thing. Um, of the channel group. Well, I'm not going to play the whole thing. So anyway, I want you to watch this video because exactly what Philippe said, you have to understand the heart of the men that started this company. Because that was step one for me. I trusted my best friend because I saw what to do to his kid. I was addicted to pain pills. And... um I don't know who was it you, Philippe, I think that said that you felt hollow and that you were in a fog. Yeah. Um, that was 25 to 30 years of my life. I was addicted to pain pills. I never abused them. But I was on a pain pill for my, I've had 10 lower back surgeries. I've had six levels fused. I had a stimulator surgically put into my back. And I frankly have a hard time remembering a lot of while I was with all my issues. So um, another website that I want you to go to next is going to be, if you're of the medical mind, I want you to go to asiascience.com. No password. asiascience.com. The first website, again, is discover, or I'm sorry, amazingmolecules.com. And there's a breakthrough video here that gives you a phenomenal, by with our business partner, Alan Noble, a great breakdown, breakdown, I'm sorry, of this presentation of the whole story. But watch the Genesis video. Then if you really want to dig into the science, scroll down and click here. Scroll down a little bit more and watch these videos right there. If you're medically science-oriented, Watch the metabolomics, watch Dr. David Neiman, and then watch her, watch Dr. Rob Ward, and then watch this guy right here, Dr. Gary Samuelson. Now, the last one that I want to point you to is maybe our favorite. And it is Triple R. Triple R. Real redoxresults.com and I got the permission of Alan Noble to share the password. This is a password protected site and the password is lowercase r-e-d-o-x lowercase r-e-d-o-x now and then here's Alan Noble sharing the seven minute preview but I want you to start looking at all these different stories and then look at what's important to you topics but I want you to just 
take a glance at how many there are. And there, I'm going to go down real fast because I don't want, we only have four minutes. So there are 107 stories here. The thing I want you to ponder, everyone is here right now because someone had the guts to share it with you. Yeah. You're here as a guest because someone had the guts to share it with you, correct? And all those 107 people, and Philippe, I'm not sure if your story is there yet. It should be, and it will be soon if it's not. Ryan, yours should definitely be there. I know Lee's, uh, Barbara, yours is on there? No, it, okay. it, it will be. But you pull one person out that didn't talk to someone and all those 107 people, their lives would not be changed. Philippe, where would you be without this? Barbara, quite, where would you quite be? Quite frankly, quite frankly, I don't know. I don't honestly, know. honestly, based on my family genetics, I'd probably be six feet under. Ryan, where would you be without this? Where would your family be without this? Probably hoping and praying for the next miracle to shine down upon us. I, I spent I spent years girding myself up, walking into hospital rooms with my wife, prepared to hear the doctors tell us the worst. Inside, I don't know that I'd be okay mentally at this point. Lee? Well, the, the real answer is we wouldn't be here if somebody hadn't shared. And, and even though my introduction was a little unconventional, from a physician who wasn't quite sure himself at the moment, but was kind of doing the last ditch effort, you know, thinking, but, but, but he heard it from a neighbor yep. who had a life struggle yep. and he shared it with a neighbor, your doctor, right. your wife's doctor. And that's how you ended up. So it all was through a connection of a person. And, and just as an aside, if you want to hear his story, you can go to the YouTube channel redox matters. And uh, he is interviewed by Dr. Dick Walker, and he tells his side of the story of that conversation with my wife. And so. to say the least, and his his personal story, uh, someone asked, what's the password? It's lowercase R-E-D-O-X, Redox, lowercase Redox. And what what is your life like now because of these molecules? Well, I know we're short on time, so in the last... We don't have the Aussies, so we can oh, run over okay. a little bit. Well, for those that are maybe going at the end of the recording, um, for, for me, you know, I got my husband back. You know, I watched him suffer. Uh, we were married at the time we got introduced to a SIA 13 years. I was with him for nine of 10 back surgeries. I watched him miss many a times with children, having naps, be, you know, being uh, after work. Then he's taking all the meds and then he's sleeping an hour and a half of an evening and not really getting to enjoy any part of life. And um, watched him go from, as he, you know, mentioned it, always on a medication of something, and then go from that to six and all next month will be six and a half years getting introduced to it. It's truly a miracle when you see someone's life transformed. And you know, we just booked our ski trip for early January in Park City, and this will be Jim's third ski trip. And again, ten back surgeries. And in six levels fused, and he'd given up many years of any activity, and he gained a lot of weight, and he's lost sixty plus pounds. And so, when you see all that, um, and having a degree in nutrition science, knowing there's nothing else that's intracellular, there's nothing else that's non-toxic, safe. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. I know many medical people get on or or look at this because it's non-toxic, and it can't hurt anything. And then the other side for us is, you know, it did save our house. We have been in a home for 11 years. And three years ago, we, we were headed to not having the home anymore. So as we grew the business part-time, it led to full-time, both of us full-time over three years ago. And now we make a very lucrative income and we are able to share this all over. And it truly has been that too a miracle to see what this has done to a family 
on the financial side. So we're very grateful. Um, so thank you. Yeah. And to, if anybody has been damaged goods like Dr. Osler, as we do this, we, we all smile and know what that is. Um, there's no better business model on the planet versus networking. We went to go see a great movie the other day, um, King Richard, um, Serena and Venus Williams, but we heard it from a friend. And so we went to go see it. They didn't get a thank you check for that. See, we go straight from the warehouse, straight from the manufacturer, straight to you. If you have a problem with networking, I'm sorry. I pray that you can get over that and just look at the technology. Look at what this does. And we are so, everyone here, our lives are changed. I don't think I would frankly be here because I was taking 500 pills a month with four prescriptions. Yeah. We have hope, people. And the only way we share this is through word of mouth. And if you have a problem with that, again, I'm sorry. But get over that. Look at the science and understand that someone shared it with you, and that's the only way you heard about this. It's the love. It's the heart, Philippe. And we're giving people hope. Yeah. So, guys, um, is there anything else, Dr. Lee, you want to say or anyone else? Tie the bow. <laughs> well, this was a Thanksgiving a Lucia Redux Thanksgiving episode, and we're so appreciative of everybody who joined with us from around the planet, literally. And I'm sure to the thousands who will watch this on replay once it gets posted, and um, and that, that notice will come out on uh, Facebook, ASEA United, or you'll get linked to it somehow. But yeah, the, uh, yeah. we always post. Well, yeah, I'll have it on Vimeo, yeah. and I'll get back to it. If you're not a part of ASEA, then you're not part of ASEA United. But the person that invited you here will have access to the Vimeo yeah. in about a half an hour. Yeah. So we're just we're just grateful for everybody that tuned in tonight. And we look forward to having you be involved so that you can have a similar type story in your own life or in a family member or close friend. Uh, this, is, this is truly life-changing. And for that, I'm very grateful. Thank you, Jen, yeah. for being able to head this up. Yeah. yeah. And again, George, y'all. I love the triple R, the real redox results.com passwords, lowercase redox. Um, I challenge you just to go listen to a video a day. And it's all one breakthrough, which has to be mind boggling is one breakthrough that gave us this, but I could go on and on and on. Uh, so guys, thank you so much. By the way, next week uh, we have Dr. Foster awesome. and uh, Malmed and Dr. Kaufman uh, will be with us. So we've got, and then we only really have two more weeks before the holiday break. So we will be taking two weeks off. And one of those, December 31, our daughter's getting married. Yeah. Uh, so we're really looking forward to having that. Yeah, yeah. finally. God, let's get them out of here. Uh, but we've been having this for a while. So guys, thank you so much. God bless. And we'll be back here next Friday. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you guys. Christmas.